after a lot of coffee and a lot of time, it's done. Am I proud of it? Eh. Is it stable? Absolutely not. I have loads of ideas for videos I want to make on this channel, and I write them all on this whiteboard. You may have seen it in previous videos, this list goes up and down, and if something sounds interesting enough to me, I usually make it. Um, so what exactly was I thinking when I wrote down pi plus 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 pi? I don't fully know. So let's go on an adventure to find out. Welcome to Mellow Labs. This is my bin of pies. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Now, I realize this isn't a Jeff Girling sized haul of raspberry pies. By the way, get well soon. We miss you, bud. But it's what I have, and I'm not currently using any of them. So I thought, what if, just to test my abilities, I could connect a pie to 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 a pie, and on every step use a different communication method. This is just a silly project for me to experiment with and test my programming skills, but what I want to do is have an RGB LED connected to one of the Raspberry Pi Picos, and have one of the Raspberry Pis connected to my computer, and be able to send a command all the way down the chain, so if I write red, that message will go all the way down the Raspberry Pis and turn the LED red. So that's my goal. Let's start by installing an OS on all of these Raspberry Pis. I hope I have enough SD cards. Turns out, no, I did not have enough SD cards. I had to order some more. Right, let's get these loaded up with Pi OS. I'm installing Raspberry Pi OS Lite just because I don't really need the desktop. Everything I'm going to do will be through the command line. Right, now that we're done with the Raspberry Pis, we can move on to the Picos. I don't need to install any code on them yet, but uh, I need to connect the LEDs that I'm going to control. So let's get a breadboard and some LEDs. Okay, which Pi Pico should be at the end of my chain? This one. Ground, ground, ground. Beautiful, now I need some resistors. Resistor one, resistor two, resistor three. I was going to do it the fast way, but no, I am going to take my time. That is the most beautiful prototype PCB board I have ever made. So with that, let's figure out how I'm going to make all of these talk to each other. Because um, I have no idea. After playing around with ChatGPT for a while, I've got two sets of code running on these Raspberry Pis. On Raspberry Pi 1, I've got a website running. First of all, we're displaying a, uh, a HTTP form which then when I input something into it, it, uh, it saves that text to a save file and then on the page slash display, it renders that text. On this window here, I can type in blue. I can write that and then on the display page, if I refresh, blue. Fantastic, so now on Raspberry Pi 2, I have a very simple web scraper that goes to the display page and prints out whatever text is there. So if I run this code now, it's going to go to that page and print out whatever is written on there. So if I go back to my page here and I type in, for example, hello, I'm not limiting the code to just red, blue, green. I, I want to be able to put through any text and it will go all the way down the chain. So now that that works, I can move on to Raspberry Pi 3. I've configured the third Raspberry Pi. I'm communicating to it over a serial connection. So if we look over here, this is just the web scraper stuff. And over here, what I'm doing first is I'm making sure that I'm not sending out messages every second because the web scraper goes to the website and checks every second and takes back the text. But what that ends up doing is it ends up sending the same text over and over. So all I'm doing here is making sure that only a new text comes through. Over here, it gets sent to the third Raspberry Pi over these two beautiful wires. And then it gets uh, read out over here. If I go over to my website and I type in hello, that will be put on the site. It will be captured by him. So as we can see here, it went over the, uh, the serial connection and it printed it out here. And I can keep doing this. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm not putting a cap on how many characters I'm sending through. So I can, for example, do, I can do a whole sentence and it will come through. That was the first time I'm testing that and I'm super happy it worked. Right, onto Raspberry Pi number four. 
it's a little while later. Raspberry Pi 4 has been configured. So this is the code running on the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, we're getting the data in through a serial connection and through a socket connection, we are sending it to the Raspberry Pi 4. So right here, it's coming back in. So uh, I've got a one and two running in the terminal window here, but I've got the web page for number one here. So again, if I enter hello, it goes all the way down the chain. It says hello here. And on the fourth Raspberry Pi, we've got hello. Fantastic. It also works with the uh, with the longer sentence, if I can find it. Here it is. Uh, if I send that through, it goes all the way down the chain. Apart from apparently I put a one on it. So I ended up settling on using sockets for this connection. I, I tried using Bluetooth, but Bluetooth for some reason has some really stupid connection issue that just does not want to connect. I also wanted to use RF, but um, I don't have the antennas I need to send messages over RF, but I will definitely look into it because it, it is really cool, the stuff you can do with it. So uh, future video maybe. Right now I'm moving on to talking to the Picos. A little bit of an update. Uh, this Pi Pico it has its uh, voltage regulator thing broken off. So uh, we have to continue without it. After a lot of coffee and a lot of time, it's done. Am I proud of it? Eh. Is it stable? Absolutely not. Let's go over what's going on here. So we've got Pi1 hosting a website which I can type stuff into, which is then being scraped by Pi2, which is then being passed over a serial connection to Pi3, which is then jumping over sockets to the Pi4, which then it's doing a really stupid jump and I'm sorry for this. This Pi is hosting its own website which this Pi goes to, and then at the end of the, uh, the URL, it puts a dash and puts the text that I'm passing over, which then I filter out here, which is then being passed over a UART connection to the final Pico. This is the code running on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and uh, it's doing a hell of a ton of filtering of that string to, to take the text just from that URL passing through, which is then being sent over to the final Pi, where we are looking for specific keywords, specifically red, on and off, blue, on and off, ada, ada, ada. Uh, so if I type in red on, the red LED comes on. If I type in blue on, the blue LED comes on. If I type in all off, all of them go off. It took so long to get here and so much caffeine. It's such a stupid little thing, but I'm so goddamn happy with it. <sighs> if you have a bunch of random Raspberry Pis, have a go. It's challenging, and who doesn't like a challenge? Anywho, if you'd like early access to my future videos, uh, join me on Patreon. And um, yeah, like, comment, sub, and if you have stupid ideas for stuff for me to do, just leave them in the comments below. I respond to all of them. Till next time, toodaloo! Have they gone yet? No, shit, they're still looking at me. Fuck.